I would like to speak with anybody other than the three of us tonight. Can you describe the feeling for me when the judge sat in front of you and handed down your sentence? Never having been in any type of trouble. Or even in a courthouse, you can imagine the feeling of saying guilty. I have a William Mahone. Is William Mahone in here with us? Says you were hung on December 18th, 1861. I have a Nicholas Melody. December 7th, 1869. On June 16, 1911, Edward Jardine, you were sentenced to hang, or you were hung on that day. If either one of you are still here with us, can you describe that feeling when the judge handed down the death penalty? up here. It sounded, for me, it sounded like it was mm. behind this door here. It was somewhere right in there. And the door's locked. Oh, see, it's back down to zero. Put it back down there, maybe. Instantly climbs. Oh, point four. Go down on the floor. It's just at this table, and this isn't. But the interesting thing is, is the K2 is not picking it up. Yeah. That's weird. Better yeah. to go up with zeros. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? I can't really, I'm squeaking, I'm moving like crazy here. I heard a knock. <clears throat> Trying to keep still, but it's not happening. I heard a knock below us. Do you want us to come downstairs? If you do, I ask that you knock again. Hey. 
get a feel for the place. So far the EMF is very flat, temperature is about the same, 23 degrees, and it is dead quiet in here. Well, we could hear cars when we were on the third floor. Mm -hmm. I heard something. Anybody up here that wants to make themselves known to us? If there's something you'd like to do, you can pull on one of our shirts, brush our hair. Did you hear that? No. It sounded like a hum. Yeah, I thought I heard something like that over there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's why I asked. That was exactly what I heard. So we think we heard you. But I heard you over here in the corner, and then Mike said he heard a, a hum, which sounded like the same sound I heard. I think it was over here that Mike heard the walking. Yeah. Was Laura on this side? I think he said it was on this in the warden's house. We have a back stair where we can walk up and across and back down. Mm -hmm. and see what happens, see what kind of noise transfers. Yeah, I can hear him. Pretty loud. Yeah, it's pretty even. Yeah, it's pretty defined. Yeah. Pretty obvious what it is. Yeah. yeah. Moved into the medical room. So maybe I'm maybe I'll talk to a doctor. Is there a doctor still here with us? Or one of these fine nurses here on the wall. Is there anybody like that here with us? I'm Nikki here. She's been out of the uh, game that we've been doing for a few years. So we obviously welcome her back, but best welcome home present would be to scare the living crap out of her. <laughs> Especially a nurse too, because I am a nurse by trade, so you know us nurses, we like to play tricks on each other. So I, I definitely welcome any hair pulling or anything else you'd like to initiate me back. Give you all the credit. I could only last three days working in a jail, and that was enough for me. You know, the prisoners are pretty brutal. They're here for a reason, obviously. And even being in the medical field, they don't uh, they don't give you any mercy. Oh, yeah. Some of the tools in here. Ether inhaler. You get sleep. Bleeding instrument. Oh dear. Is there anyone in this cell with me? The K2 has just been like nothing. Our millimeter's just been completely flat. Our millimeter's been like 0.4. Hmm? Yeah, point one, point two, point three, point four, somewhere in there. There's nothing. So many people would have come through here and realized that their lives were at an end <clears throat> for a simple mistake or a misunderstanding that led to someone else's death. Where are you guys? We're up in the uh, warden's 
upstairs on the top floor back in the children's aid office area, kind of, where the kids' room is. Okay, were you guys stomping around? You're stomping around. Mm -hmm. Like how hard? Like we, we walked into this room, but we weren't stomping around. Man. Yeah, no, it's not like some pretty heavy footsteps up here. We're in the hard house. Yeah, they wouldn't. No, you wouldn't have heard us all the way over there, even if we were stomping around. So, no, that wasn't us. You have to wonder how one was feeling in here. Being in this room, knowing that other people were judging you. They hold your life in their hands. Essentially debating or deciding whether you live or die. How'd that make you feel? That's what it sounded like when I was sitting there. You could hear a couple of footsteps. Yeah. Sitting on that bench. Sitting on that bench. Yep. It would go from here, <clears throat> right, to to where I am here. Yeah. In front of this door. So I mean, we're only talking about less than five feet. Yeah. We're only really talking like a five foot span. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's let's see a cell block. Uh, Maria stayed in this one. I was committed to the goal uh, on a jail on June 22, 1866 on the charge of insulting language. I was 28 years old, 5 feet 2, fair complexion, blue eyes and red hair. I was born in Ireland and had been living in Canada for 15 years at the time of my arrest. I was married with two children. She was released from the jail June 23, 1866. So the next day. <laughs> Isabella, I was incarcerated in the Gadget Jail, March 24, 1863, on the charge of suffocating my child. I was 19 years old, 4 foot 11 tall, well, 4 foot 11 inches tall, with dark complexion, blackish colored eyes, and dark colored hair. Born in Canada by faith, member of the Church of Scotland, released from the jail, April 2, 1863. Well, we like sentencing for what she did. If any of these ladies are with us, can you can you do anything for me? When I was standing in the hallway, I found it felt like someone kind of touched my backside. I had a little pressure on the left side of my behind. That was kind of funny. I thought I hit the heater, but I did not. I would uh, uh, be fully understanding that this was the women's ward, because that's all the names I see on the wall. Is there still a female prisoner in here? I know a lot of these ladies were released, but one did pass away. All right, 
so we've moved up into the governor's house. Uh, the other team is um, in the cell blocks. So we've split up. Sam travels pretty quick in this in this building. There's children in here. Would you like to come in here and talk to myself or Nikki? I just went back down. Point three. Would you rather me talk about you? Went from, went from a point four down to a point one, <laughs> up to a point two, and I started talking about our kids and went down to zero point zero. Hmm. And I said, I want to talk, do you want me to talk about you? It jumped up to point four. Wow. Yep. Is there anyone up here with us right now? Hung on this land? That sounded like a pretty clear help me. Yes. Weird, because like, I thought this was like this way, like a great, like, like the railing was this way, and it was almost like, a, it was almost like someone was like this, like a kid would do on a stair, and it just kind of popped up to about this height, and just popped back down. That's why I thought it was like stairs going down this way, not up. Like, not like this. That was weird. I don't know if it, my eyes playing tricks on me or... But it was very fast.
Whew. Stern looking nurses there. Holy smokes. <laughs>